Welcome to the podcast. I've got an amazing show for you today. I say that all the time, but this is really going to be a special show because you know my support for the police. You know how I love military dogs. You know how I love police dogs. And again, wearing my goofy blue line, support the blue line shirt. The guy I've got here was a special uh, favor from a good friend of mine named Cindy Beck, who, who introduced me to Michael Goosby. He is the um, trainer of the LAPD canines. So I'm going to bring him on. We're going to talk you're going to love the show. It's going to be, we've already been talking up in the kitchen with Janet and stuff, and it's already been an amazing chat. Michael, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Well, um, God, where do we start? You know, <laughs> you're driving the truck, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, we already talked about our love for mouth. We've got that yes. in common. Um, tell me a little bit, cause you, you are the guy who picks the dogs for the officers. That's correct. Right. And you're the one who kind of determines, what handler should have what dog. And I think that's a really important piece that we don't ever really hear about. Right. Right. What, what goes into that process? Like, what do you ask the, ask the officer or what do you look for in his personality before you go, Oh, that's a great dog for you. Well, you know, I don't do so much for the officer as I do for the dog, mm. you know, cause we're a dog unit and without the dogs, we're not a dog unit. So, I, um, I look for a certain type of dog first. Mm -hmm. And I think you look across our unit, you'll see that all of our dogs are pretty much around the same type as far as characteristics, as far as personalities. I mean, don't get me wrong, some are higher drive than others, some right. are lower drive than others. But I, I look for uh, a certain type of dog, but the handler side of things goes back to our selection process. Mm -hmm. So when we're selecting handlers, we're selecting certain types of people mm -hmm. because these types of people need to work with these types of dogs. Because it's very hard to go out, as well as you know, to go out and find that perfect dog and that perfect handler and then have that perfect marriage. Yeah. You know, there's too many dynamics involved there. Right. So, I mean, our job is going out and finding bad guys. Right. And to go out and find bad guys, you need a certain type of dog for that. A certain dog with uh, certain levels of defense drive, prey drive, fight drive. Mm -hmm. So, I have to get a type personality handlers, if you will, yeah. that can kind of handle those types of dogs. So, what goes in? Because this is the question I've always got. I'm a cop. I love my job. I'm a, I'm a beat cop. And I go, you know what? I love dogs. I want to join the canine unit. Right. What, what happens? Like, what's the screening process or the, or the training process? So uh, ours is pretty, uh, it, it's pretty, it's pretty involved. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because, you know, there's a lot of perks that come on with canine. Mm -hmm. You get the cool car, you get the cool t-shirts, <laughs> right. but I don't want a person that's coming to work to wear a cool t-shirt. Right. I want a person that wants to get that t-shirt dirty and have dog hair on it. Yeah. So it's really involved. Uh, it's evolved over the years. So pretty much what happens now is to start off, you have to pass a physical fitness qualification. Mm -hmm. And then once you're selected, if you're selected, you have to pass that same physical fitness qualification twice a year. That's awesome. Well, that's the first thing you have to do. Yeah, we, yeah, we got to be in shape because working dogs mm -hmm. is, is work. Right. So we put them through a physical fitness qualification. We have to run a um, 1.5 mile hill run in uh, 13 minutes, 30 seconds. Okay. As soon as that's done, they have to do a minimum of 30 push-ups, maximum of 50. And then a minimum of 40 sit-ups, a maximum of 80. And then they have to uh, do five pull-ups at least. So once they do that, then they pass that portion. They go to our skills day. Our skills day now is going to test the, the officer in them. Mm -hmm. And the thing about canine work is that you can work any job on LAPD, but none of them will prepare you for working a dog. Right. <laughs> it's right. the only job sure. that's like that. You know, right. It's almost like finding a helicopter. Right. I mean, I can work a lot of jobs, <laughs> but that's going to prepare me to right. be 10,000 feet up right. flying right. this right. machine. So we now test the officer's skills. When we put them through an obedience course, that's much like a canine search. They wear a tag vest, they wear a helmet, and they have to traverse over things, underneath things. They have to climb a uh, six foot fence, mm -hmm. and they have to lift a 75 pound uh, sandbag, as mm -hmm. if it's a dog, right. put it over a fence. And then we put them through a, a firearms qualification. Mm -hmm. They have to pass a firearms qualification. And then we take them to the field, and we want to see, okay, are you willing to take a bite from a dog? Right. And we give them a little down and dirty quick uh, lesson on taking dog bite, bites okay. from a dog in a bite suit. They don the bite suit. And you'd be surprised. There are people who stop at that point and say, yeah, you know what? Really? I like the job, but I didn't like it to this point. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and so, right. But all these things, again, are to test just see how much you want to do this job. Yeah. Because our guys are taken care of. They get a lot of work. And they're going to become part of a premier canine unit. For sure. You know? So it's pretty competitive. So we need to have some way to, you know, 
muddle through all the murk and find the you know the diamond in the rough there. What's your like? What? How many people make it? Like out of one hundred percent? So I mean, if we have last time we tried, we had uh, we had thirty six people try out. Okay, and then uh, five people made our outstanding pool. Wow. Out of that, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and so and one of the biggest things that we do that really separates the cream from the crop is that uh, we have a two-week loan. They come on loan to the unit for two weeks. Okay. And that's our chance to see your leadership skills, how mm. well you gel within a small unit dynamic. Right. You know, how well, how well you get along with others. And in your command presence. Yep. Because you're going to need that to work the type of dog we get you. Right. You're going to need to have that command presence. How many people are in the canine unit of the entire LAPD now? Active? So in our so LAP is a very organic department, if you will, mm -hmm. and everything is specialized. And it actually works out better in the canine world because we're all of our dogs are single purpose. Mm -hmm. oh, so, okay. so all of our dogs are specialists, if you will, mm -hmm. as opposed to generalists. Right. You're not going to have a generalist dog where this dog is trained in uh, patrol functions, mm -hmm. tracking, and maybe uh, ancillary duty of narcotic detection okay. or bomb detection. Okay. You know, where for us, so on our unit, the Metro Canine Unit, we have 24, hand, 24 dogs, 19 handlers. Okay. 19 of those dogs are single purpose. I search for the bad guy dog. Okay. And then five of them are single purpose gun detection dogs. Gun detection. Gun detection. Okay. So if we get a perimeter set up and they say, hey, we had a manly gun run. Mm -hmm. He ran that way and uh, he had a gun. We go find him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a gun on him. We bring our gun dogs out now to search for the outstanding weapon. Okay. The last thing we need is a kid finding that gun and picking right. it up you know, right, a couple right, days right. later. Yeah, it's huge. So, okay, so there's how, how many of them are dual purpose dogs? So we have no dual purpose dogs in LAPD. Not at all. No, so uh, bombs, Bomb Canine has their own 16 dogs. Okay. And Narcotics, the uh, Gang and Narcotics Division has their own like 14 dogs. Okay. And so they're all single purpose. Got it. And the three units are separate. They do their MOS, we mm -hmm. do ours, and Bombs does theirs. Got it. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Is that common? Because I think most departments no, have dual purpose dogs. That's not cheaper, common at all. Right? Exactly. It's cheaper. But right. again, you know, we have the resources to make it happen. Yeah. And uh, it works out much better. Yeah. Because now sure. that dog is not a jack of all trades, it's just a master of one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it makes it work, it makes less work for the handler as well. Mm -hmm. Because a handler can now just focus on that one discipline and yeah. get very good at it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And do they get training? Obviously, you, you do continuous training, right? Yes. All the time. So we're very fortunate. We have a full-time canine unit. Mm -hmm. What that means is our folks only work canine. They don't handle radio calls. Right. They don't write tickets, no traffic enforcement. They only work canine mm -hmm. and respond to canine requests throughout the city. But during the times there are no canine requests, we're training the whole time. Okay, that's so, what I was going to yeah, ask you, right? So our handlers train every, our dogs train every single night they're working. The only way they won't train is if we get canine search requests and we're actually working. Which, yeah, yeah, yeah. For lack of a better term, that's work, that's training as well. Training as well, you yeah. Know, yeah, you, yeah. But you're just doing it in the real world environment. Right. And you don't handle any of the stuff at the airport. You're just Metro. We're just Metro. Yeah, that's what no, I thought. We're just okay. Metro. So we, uh, what happens for us is 77th Division will have, say they had a foot pursuit. They'll set a perimeter up and contain it. And they'll call us out with our dogs to go out and search for the outstanding suspect. So when you're searching, all the, you're tracking dogs or, so or our, search dogs? our dogs aren't tracking dogs. Okay. We do it. air scenting. They're okay, search dogs. It. Yeah, we do off-leash air scenting. Got it. And uh, they're tactical search dogs. So they're okay. able to be directed by the handler, hand, hand, uh, hand directions, voice. And at night, the dogs are trained to follow our handler's flashlight. So Great. if the handler flashes flashlight in one corner of a yard, the Boom. dog goes there. Okay. If he points that flashlight to a doorway, the dog goes inside that doorway. Got it, got it, got it. And so when they they find the suspect, then they bark and hold? or they Yes, just... they're bark and hold. Okay, bark. Yeah, so we became bark and hold back in uh, 1990 mm -hmm. after a, a major uh, lawsuit settlement with uh, Chu versus Gates. Okay, what yeah. happened there? So back then, uh, the city went through a, a certain point where we were having a lot of dog bites. Mm -hmm. And so there was a massive uh, class action lawsuit. And there was a settlement, and there the, obviously the terms of the settlement were, weren't disclosed, but they were, they were disclosed to us mm -hmm. because <laughs> right. we had to live through it. Yeah. So what came out of that settlement were a few things. One was uh, we had to establish a position of a chief trainer, mm -hmm. which is uh, what I hold that now, right. and we had to have a full-time training cadre. If we're going to train our dogs, we have a full-time training cadre and a full-time chief trainer. We had to go to e-collar, okay. working the dogs off leash. Good. And we had to leave from find and bite to, to bark and hold. Okay. So those are some of the, the settlement things that we had to go through to change our unit. But how does that deter, how does that work? Because you have a detection dog or who will, or a search dog who will find the person. But what if there's an apprehension? Is there no apprehension? Dog there are. Dog? Yes. So the dogs are conditioned. You know, a lot of people say, well, you let a dog make a decision. Well, dogs don't make decisions. No. Dogs are trained. Mm -hmm. They're conditioned to do certain things under a certain set of circumstances. Right. You know, uh, they get a consist a conditioned stimulus to a condition to that turns into a conditioned reaction. Right. You know, so our dogs are trained that the suspect uh, 
stay still and doesn't try to fight the dog or try to escape, the dog will bark. If he tries to fight the dog or try to escape, the dog will take a bite hold of the suspect. Mm -hmm. A single bite, bite a hold. single bite hold, right, yeah. Right, and, we, right. and we train constantly for the. And don't get me wrong, if you have a suspect that's fighting sometimes and right. they're throwing lambs, the dog will let go because if he's getting hit in the head, he's sure. gonna let go and bite the bite the, the other head. exactly. <laughs> but for the most part, though, yeah. they do bite and hold in one position, right, one, right, one right. spot. Do those do those dogs come more from a, a sport training background? Some do. Um, years ago, most of them did mm -hmm. because, as you know, before we got into this. Uh, proliferation of dogs in the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to be you get most of your dogs came from either an IPO or Schutzen background, right. maybe a KMPV or a ring sport background. Yeah. You know, and those dogs back then when we got them were about three or four years old. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, I mean, everybody has a dog now. Mm -hmm. Every entity wants a dog now. The, yeah. From the, the highest levels of military right. to the lowest levels of just <clears throat> security work. Sure. You know, so it's harder to get good dogs. Yeah. So the dogs are a lot younger now. So we're getting a lot more green dogs now. Okay. And what I mean by that is these dogs are coming over, they understand the sleeve, they understand the bite suit, mm -hmm. but they don't have a whole lot of obedience in them and they don't have a whole lot of tracking or searching whatever whatever else you want in them. They don't have the, the control that, right. that a lot of sport dogs do. But they're started. They're started, okay, yes, they're so started. they're not totally green. They're not totally green, right. they're started, they're started. But I mean, I, I get dogs in now, we're training these dogs how to sit. Okay, got you know? it, wow. but, but we're fortunate though because we train in house. Yeah. Okay. Most most canine handlers get a dog and they go to a vendor or to a canine basic course. It's about six weeks. Yeah. Our dogs for a brand new handler, the handlers have been training for about six to nine months. With yeah. Dog. I think you need it. I mean, it's, absolutely. You know, it's just, more training it, better. Just, yeah. Well, not only that though, but you know, I'm really big. About our department and uh, me, particular trainer, I'm really big on control. Yeah. And uh, we tr we search in a city that's 503 square miles, 4.3 million people. Wow. And we search off leash. So we have to have a lot of control on these dogs. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of control work. There's a lot of vetting of the dog. Mm -hmm. You know, I need I can't have a dog that's over the top. Mm -hmm. He's gotta be social. When I say social, I don't mean that my friends can come over and play with them, <laughs> but I do mean we take officers out on our search teams mm -hmm. and a dog has to be neutral to those officers on our right. search team. Yeah, you know? no to redirect. Yeah, they that, that <laughs> officer on the search team should just be a treat to that dog. Mm. They have has no no there's no they're very neutral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No redirection. And do you, because we we're talking about, I know you've got a shepherd. Yes, at home, yes. And, and I, a Bichon Frise. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Bichon Frise. You didn't say yes. that before. Well, I, hey, if I don't say my daughter's dog, Dylan. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shout never, out. I'll never hear the end of it. Yes, hi, Dylan. Right. <laughs> what, what, so you've got the German shepherd, and you said it's a Czech, so it's a big Yes, a he's big, a big shepherd. Yeah, a big he's boy. a big boy. Yeah. yeah. And then on the department, what's your ratio between breeds? Oh, so right now we have uh, 19 patrol dogs and 19 patrol dogs are, we have 19 Malinois and one Dutch Shepherd. Well, now when you say patrol, you're saying? These are dogs search for bad guys. Got it, got yeah. it. Search, so, search yeah. so the common term, well, they're actually, for us, they're tactical search dogs. Got it. But the common term in the, in the canine community, they're called patrol dogs. Got it. But that's because most canine officers are patrol officers, mm. but they have a dog in the back seat. Got it. Where our guys aren't that. They're not patrol officers. They're actually just canine handlers only. Got it, got it, got but it. But so we have 19 of those, and like I said, uh, 18 are Malinois and one's a Dutch Shepherd. Wow. How did that one get in there? Yeah, he yeah he just absolutely <laughs> got in there. He he's doing he's in training right now. Phenomenal uh -huh. little dog. Yeah. yeah, he's a phenomenal little dog. Yeah, and then our gun dogs we have uh, one German Shepherd, one Dutch Shepherd, and then the rest are the other three are Malinois. And so you you say you keep saying gun dogs. Now what about dope dogs and bomb dogs? So they have their own dogs. So the bomb dogs is two t it's two entities to LAPD bomb canines. Okay. One side are the airport dogs, which are furnished and funded by TSA. Okay. So those dogs are technically TSA dogs, but they're working through L they're working with LAPD officers. But okay. they go through Lackland TSA training and right. so on and so forth. Right. And then we have two city bomb dogs that work out of bomb squad itself. Okay. And they're the dogs that if uh, bomb squad gets a call, mm -hmm. they may, if they need a dog on it, they're gonna go to those dogs first. Right. If there's a uh, Grammy award or a uh, Academy Awards, something like that, right. and they need to do sweeps. They're going to bring those dogs in okay. and go to those dogs first. And those are males. Those are uh, those are uh, one male and one uh, Labrador Retriever. Oh, Labrador. Yeah. Oh. yeah, and then the bomb canine at the airport. They have GSPs. They have Spaniels. They have Labrador Retrievers. Oh, yeah. they they run the gamut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because those dogs are all single purpose detection, remember? Right. So you don't need a pointy eared, so to speak, bite dog right. to do those jobs. You know? <laughs> yeah, and it's friendlier in an airport. Exactly. You know, airport scared. environment. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you know, in the city of LA, I mean. Perception is a lot. Perception is everything. So yeah, it's sure. a big deal. So what do you think is like the one thing that the public 
takes away from the dogs? Like, do they think it's a good thing, a bad? I mean, I think it's fantastic. I think that I think that the when the public learns more about the dogs, mm-hmm. the takeaway is a good thing. Yeah, but you know, I think though, if you were to scroll the public or pan the public, mm-hmm. I think everybody's perception of a police dog is that they go out and bite people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> They're attacking <laughs> right, dogs. Right, right, right. You know, and they don't go out and attack people. Right. You know, they go out and the, our, the primary job is to find people. Right. You know, I'd rather have a dog that finds real well and bites mediocre. Yeah, You know, sure. because for us, we need the dog to find you. Yeah. Once the dog finds you, the dog is actually for us taking out of the picture. Right. Because now we have other tools to get you into custody. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so it's that's safer for the dog. It's safer right? for the dog too. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, it's, it's so easy to te- teach any dog to bite something. Yeah. That's the easiest thing in the world. Like getting him to you let know? go. But exactly. Can you let go? <laughs> can you let go? Yeah. And can you find something? Yeah. And be satisfied with just finding it without biting on yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. If you want to really get my fire going, show me a dog that finds someone that we would never found had we not used a dog. Yeah, that's yep. what I like. That's, yep. that's 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 the bread and butter right there for sure. Yeah, I agree with you. Know. you. Well, um, did you ever do any search and rescue stuff? I have not. No, that's Everything. fascinating. Stuff. I, oh, right. it is fascinating. Cadavers. I, well, I think I, oh, we had so we did have a cadaver dog once in the unit. Oh wow! Yeah, one of our old trainers, uh, Linda Travis, she worked mm-hmm. a cadaver dog, and it was awesome. Wow. Yeah, it worked his weight in gold. You know, I mean, there's just so many things you can do with the dog's nose. It's just... It's insane, right? I, yeah, I, I, I've been doing this for 23 years, and I can guarantee you I've only scratched the surface. I, I agree. I've only scratched the surface. I I, I, I'm not Let's, nowhere near deep. <laughs> Lou and I used to always talk about that. He'd been doing it for 50 years. Right. Right. And right. I'd been doing it for about 15. And, you know, he'd say, oh, I learned something from you. And I was like, from me? Absolutely. And he said, let me tell you something. He goes, I was at the park one day, and I was talking to, it was a little kid there. And the kid said, hey, mister, why are you doing it like that? You should try it this way. And he looked at the kid and he went, what the hell do you know? <laughs> and he goes, but he was right. Right. right? Like he actually, he, he goes, I, got, I learned something. Yes. And the, the greatest dog trainers in the world are always learning. You, all, you have right? to be because the thing about it is that you never become the expert because every dog is different. Every dog. Every dog is different. Yeah. And you have to change the way you train this dog Versus the way you train the last dog, yeah. and so on and so forth. You they always bring something change, to the table. They, right? they bring something different to the table all the time. Yeah. And you got to figure it out. And that's that's so you were saying when you get these dogs, so you're, you're you're importing most of them or getting. Them yeah, most of them come from uh, they come from import. We buy a lot of our dogs down at Atla Horse, in, yeah, uh, Riverside. Yeah. yeah, and all those dogs are imported from uh, now. They're from Netherlands, uh, right? Netherlands, uh, Slovakia. Oh, Poland, France, yeah, yeah he, they they do the I call it the dog tour. Yeah. They land in Hungary and start working their way back west. <laughs> yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So when they bring these dogs in, I mean, they've got a plane full of dogs. They do. Right? Yeah, they come back. Uh, I've gone with them more than a few times, and yeah. they come back with 35, 40 dogs easily. This last time he oh. went, he came back with fifty six dogs. It's crazy. Yeah, right? it's crazy. You it's know, crazy. but you know, but they go over there and they test every single dog they bring back. They yeah. test all the dogs. So yeah. I know for a fact when they bring dogs back. Those dogs will be police dogs somewhere. Right. Maybe not for me, maybe not for you, but for someone, they're yeah. going to work out in their program. Well, I was going to ask you about that. So the washout rate is pretty much zero. For us, it's right? pretty high. But well, it's pretty high, but I'm saying is the dogs, it's from the dog's perspective, they're going to go somewhere and work. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. But for the department, for LAPD, because yes. you guys are very picky, and yeah. you can be. Uh, my my rate. washout rate right now is probably 45, 50% easily. 50% washout? Yeah, yeah washout, yeah. Wow. That's and, that's, and again, so, you know, our dogs have to be trained within LA, LAPD's uh, policies and procedures. Yeah. And they're pretty strict. Yeah. You know, heavy as a head, there was a crown or, you know, uh-huh. the, the, to him who much is given, much is expected. Yep. We're able to go out and search for these dogs off leash in a city of 4.3 million. Amazing. So these dogs have to have a certain level of control. Yeah. S- uh, social ability within them, you know. Yeah. And for our dogs, they have to be able to handle the e-collar. For sure. That's a big deal. But I want, okay, so I want to talk about e-collar stuff because I'm such an advocate of e-collars. I've talked about it, and I think, to me, it's the most positive tool you can possibly use on a dog. And my theory on it, and I want to know your theory on it, is if I give a dog a yank on a leash, he's like, you just did that. If he's over there and I give him a buzz on the collar, a, a pop on the collar, he's like, okay, I did something wrong. And right. he looks back at me, and he's looking at me for direction. Correct. Right? Is, is, do you, do yeah. You, so for us, the e-collar, I think if you talk to most e-collar people, or most people who don't like the e-collar, right. they view it as a punishment tool. Right. And if you think about over the years, I mean, the times that it was being used, the dog would be in a bite, and they kick the dog off. Oh, right. well, strap that thing on him, and right. they fry the dog off. Right. Well, you, yeah, you're going to hurt a whole lot of stuff going on there. Sure. Uh, for for me and for us, the e collar is a communication tool. Mm-hmm. I never use the e collar to train the dog. I use the e collar to communicate with the dog. 
So in other words, I'm not going to use the e-collar on the dog on something that I haven't trained him to do yet. It's just not that. fair. <clears throat> so it. I'm going to take him through all those obedience commands. Sit, down, stay, heal. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to take him through all that. Yeah. And then once I get him through all that, and he's fine on e- with the leash correction, mm-hmm. I'm now going to marry my e-collar correction to the leash correction. That's so perfect. now it becomes yeah. the same thing. Yeah. And pretty soon the leash is dropped and just an e-collar now. And so when he's away from me, I can communicate the dog. He understands what the command means. Right. He knows how to escape the stimulation. Exactly. And that's the main thing. Yeah. You know, and the beauty of it too, though, is that they are dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, there are certain things that me as a human can see mm-hmm. that may make my mind get stimulated. Right. But my heart and the other side of my mind knows that, yeah, I like that, but mm-hmm. I'm in uniform right now, so I'm gonna leave that glass of bourbon alone. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> come, come back. Until I come back, but I can't do it right now. Right. Well, dogs don't know that. No, no. Dogs, I like that, mm-hmm. and I want it right, right now. now. Yeah. So their level of stimulation goes up. So the e-collar, the beauty of that, obviously, which you all know, it allows me to creep up with them. You know, and I tell people all the time, if you get a, a 75 pound Malinois or you get a 60 pound Malinois, that's a full blown drive. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you, you're not going to be stronger than that dog. No. You need happen. something to equalize yeah, that. Yeah. You, you need equalizer. Yeah. You will not be able to match that dog. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> that's <laughs> Janet over yeah, there. She's over here. <laughs> we talked about but that. Yeah. Again. But that's exactly but it. But you want, you need something to yeah. be able to win. Yeah. You have to win. But then what you said is so important. I think that's the crux of the issue that people don't understand. People think, I'm going to teach the dog, like they do escapes, right? So right. they'll hold the buzzer, sit until the dog sits, and the dog's like, ah, oh, shit, what do I do? Exactly. And then he sits and I take it off. So unfair. Unfair. Right? But let's lure him, let's shape him, let's motivate exactly. him. Exactly. And then later, I tell him to sit, hey, sit. He understands what he sit understands means. He understands what it means. Exactly. Now, if he chooses to avoid it, exactly. I can hold the upper hand. Right. And like I said, like with Janet, she was asking me a question on, on, on e-commerce with like some people who were out hunting. And um, some of the women were out there, and, and I said, she goes, well, how come these women are using e And I said, because, and, and, and our friend Jeremy, who's a great gun dog trainer, doesn't use it. I said, he's a big guy. He's 210 pounds. He's bigger than me. I said, when he gets in a dog's face, the lab, boom, the dog says, okay, I Dominance. got this. Yes. Right? Janet gets in a dog's face, it's, it's kisses and hugs. Right. right. I said, so you want to level that playing field because it's, it's clearer communication for Clear that communication. dog. Clear right? communication. I just, I mean, I loved, I didn't know uh, LAPD uses e collars Well, and the other side of the coin, too, though, is not only is it clear communication, but it's communication right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's certain times where I can't give you more than one command. Mm-hmm. I need you to listen to that first command right now. Yep. You know, again, my level of stimulation's gone up, your level's gone up, but I need you to stop right now. Give mm-hmm. me an example. So we were searching for a suspect off of the, uh, the 210 freeway in Sunland. Mm-hmm. It was on the side of the freeway, and uh, the dog is searching. And he starts working his way toward the bush. Well, the suspect's in the bush and sees the dog coming. The suspect jumps out of the bush and takes off across the street. And there's traffic going because it's the officers that's supposed to hold traffic hadn't held, held it very mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Well, he's running. The dog doesn't realize there's traffic. All he knows is I've missed a lock on this guy right here. Yep. And I want to add some teeth to it now. Yeah, yeah. So the dog is running. The suspect misses the car. But the handler sees the dog about to get hit and automatically off, which means yeah. it goes down. Right. And the dog stopped it in his tracks right there. I love it. So it's not just a, again, it's not just a tool where I need you to listen, I'm going to correct you. It's yeah. a tool I might save your save life. Save your life, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's again, great. working with around people and, you know, working with dogs that are trained to perfect their bite. Yeah. You know, we don't train dogs to bite. Dogs, all dogs bite. It's you know, that's a natural thing, yeah. right? That's their communication. Mm-hmm. But we're training dogs to perfect their bite. Right. So it's good to have the extra layer of control to understand that, you know, they have to know where the pack leadership lies. And, mm-hmm. and when I speak, you need to listen. And it gets down to that, doesn't it? Like people always want to avoid that. They always want to, and this is my issue with positive only training. It's, they're very vocal and they're very critical, but the bottom line is they're just not dealing with those dogs that are going up and drive. I mean, any dog, if I teach a dog to sit and stay, they're going to stay. It doesn't matter. But if Ex- a chicken walks in front of them. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Or a tennis ball rolls by them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So no, absolutely. Huge. Yeah. And I mean, you just, but again, everything can't be positive because then you won't learn. Or even us as humans. That's what you're going to yeah, say, you, right? Yeah. You can't, you, if everything's <laughs> yeah. positive, that should yeah. be great. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, pretty perfect. No, right? you can't, and you need, there yeah. has to be some kind of negative reinforcement there. And the thing is with the e collar, it's, I don't want to go into this thing with Dave Reavers in a second about, about the less than lethal thing. Um, the e collar thing is, it's just fair. Yes. In other words, it, it takes away, like if I'm jacked up, 
I'm chasing somebody, I'm, I'm pretending I'm role playing to be a cop, um, but I'm chasing my adrenaline side of the dog and, then, and the dog's adrenaline side. Now I might come down harder on that dog than oh, I would really need to. Absolutely. Right? Where with the e collar, okay, I'm just pushing a button. Hey, out, off, down, whatever, right? I'll take it, I'll take it down four or five notches. Just go to any park mm -hmm. and watch someone working with their dog in the collar. I guarantee you, you're going to see more pissed off reactions towards a dog and harder corrections with the collar yeah. than you would with me using the e-collar. For sure. Because, again, they can't win and yeah. they get pissed off and they mm -hmm. start yanking on the dog's neck and everything. Yeah. Or I can just sit there and give a light little stimulation. The dog understands what it means Perfect. and knows how to turn it off. Yeah. And if he goes up a notch, I go up a notch. I don't need to no. come out over the top of it. Exactly. Yeah. It's really. But it's very easy to use it the wrong way because when I first got into canine, you know, when you first get the canine, you think you become a canine expert overnight. Yeah. <laughs> so we had this Labrador Retriever, uh, Bango, and uh, Bango, every time you open the, the gate, the dog would run out in the street and you have to spend hours trying to get him back inside the gate. <laughs> so we go, I get my new police dog and we get our e-collar training going on and I come home, honey, I got the answer. I got it. I got this. <laughs> I'm in charge now. Right. Bango will know in no more. Right. And he had never seen the e-collar, he didn't, didn't never be, was never on one. And so we go out there. I'm going to wash the car. My son's out there. And my wife goes, well, I got to close the gate. Bang, go, oh, no, hold on for a minute. Put the e-collar on him. Okay, watch this. He'll be fine. <laughs> I know where this is going. He <laughs> comes out of that gate. And I go, Bango, come. Whammo. Yeah. That dog jumped. Fur flew off of him. He took <laughs> off. We got that dog back five days later. <laughs> and he understand. was neutered. And it cost me $500. Oh. He got picked up by animal control. <laughs> So, <laughs> most expensive e collar yeah, lesson I, ever. I think right? my family started talking to me yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's funny. No. I had a client like that in, in Malibu in the colony. This put, yeah. put an e collar on, come, boom, the dog was all the way, it, right. it was like in what, Malibu West. Yeah, had no clue. It, had no clue. Yeah. And how unfair that Absolutely. is. And this is why the, the issue I have is right away people say, well, we need to ban these things. No, we just no. need to ban stupid uses. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I mean, it's such a powerful tool. Right. And, I know, mean, you could put a car in the wrong hands. Yeah, we're gonna ban cars. Pencil. Yeah, pencil. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> stab somebody in the neck with a pencil. Exactly. You can't hold pencils. Right. But that's, that's interesting. So I want to talk about this thing because people always see police dogs as being like you know. I mean, one of my favorite things to see personally is I love seeing a police dog doing his job. Right. Yes. And and when a do when a person is a real jerk to the the dog and that dog just continues his pursuit of what he's supposed to be doing it's literally poetry in motion I, right. I love it and you know i know a lot of friends of mine who are cops i know that they're always told stop or i'll send the dog right and then if they don't listen to that that's always a bad mistake correct but i think the point that um reavers argued in court in i think it was the 60s or 70s and i want to ask you if you know about that the less than lethal Mm -hmm. um, theory. Can you talk about that? Because yeah. I think it's so important. So you mean the, the dog being a less lethal tool. Yeah. And the dog is a less lethal tool. Right. I mean, there's case law that supports it, obviously. It's mm -hmm. cool there first because people always think, well, the dog is like deadly. Well, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, the dog is a less lethal tool, but it gives you that one more tool you have to bring this thing to a uh, positive outcome. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a tool of de-escalation. You know, I, I mean, and, and you got to look at it across the board. So Working at LAPD, we have 10,000 officers. Uh -huh. So 10,000 officers and a lot of resources. I mean, we have enough resources to have 56 dogs that work our city, wow. on LA, on, on LAPD canine dogs, 56 mm -hmm. of them total, and they're all single purpose. That's a lot of resources. Wow. But move that operation to Duluth, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Move it to Billings, Montana. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a, I'm a canine handler in Billings, Montana, and my nearest backup is 45 miles away. Okay, that changes the game now. Big time. But now the department's giving me this one more option I can go to mm -hmm. outside of deadly force. Mm -hmm. And the thing about the less lethal two of the dogs, I've seen it where you can have a suspect with 15 guns pointed at him and he won't listen. Mm -hmm. You let one dog bark and all of a sudden, oh, you meant go to my knees, my hands behind my head. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. sir. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Yeah, I didn't hear you the first time. But since you said it in that bark language, right, right. I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, that's you know? very funny. And yeah. So, but yeah, but it, but it is that tool less lethal. But it also, if you think about the, this, we use our dogs for locating tools, mm -hmm. you know, and the dog is able to give you the ability to communicate and negotiate. Mm -hmm. Meaning the dog is searching, he's hunting, and he finds a suspect hiding in a trash can. Mm -hmm. He goes to a trash can, he jumps against it, he starts barking. We know he gave a positive alert on the trash can. He gave us positive that dog's there. So we call the dog back. Now I call the dog back. I have the ability now to communicate and negotiate the suspect inside the trash can. Right change that same scenario, it's just me and I'm searching along, 
I pop that trash can open, and that's the first time I'm going to know he's in there because yeah. I can't feel it and get feel the warmth of it. Sure. And know someone's there or the smell. And the smell exactly. I pop it open. Now I got two seconds. There's two seconds between us, and that two whatever we perceive in those two seconds is going to be outcome of this thing. It could be very Life ugly. And death, yeah. It could be very ugly. Yeah. So that 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 less lethal option of using a dog as a de-escalation tool is huge, yeah. without a doubt. I agree. What what determines we're going to send a dog? So for us, we have a canine search criteria. Can you talk about that? Uh, absolutely. Okay. No, yeah, without a doubt. That, yes. Yeah. So our canine search criteria is we'll search for any outstanding felony suspect. Mm -hmm. Or any suspect that's reasonably believed to be armed with a gun or any type of other deadly weapon. So if they have that, we're going to search for them. We're not real big. I'm not a big fan of it. We're not real big on using our dogs to affect arrest or apprehensions. Okay. Unless it's like a last resort. Again, we have other tools to do that. Right. You know, and the thing about using a dog is he is still an animal. Mm -hmm. And so if, if I use a dog, he's going to take me outside of my tactical safety zone, then I'm not going to have to use a dog in the scenario. Yeah. So it depends what we have. Like like uh, a couple weeks ago, it's on the news, we had a suspect that was uh, in a pursuit. It was a domestic violence. He was armed, and he was armed with a knife, and he uh, crashed his car into a hillside and threw a, tr uh, a fence, and he barricaded himself inside the, the vehicle. So we came out. Obviously, the officers were negotiating, communicating, and he didn't want to didn't want to give up. Uh, so what we did was we brought the dogs there along with SWAT, and when SWAT introduced gas into the car, the suspect jumped out and started to run. Mm. Well, then we deployed a dog because we didn't want this armed suspect to get to the community. So then we deployed a dog to, to a bite. But we never would have deployed a dog inside that car. I want to talk about that because that's a really important piece. Every good police officer I've ever talked to, a cannon officer, they don't ever the deploy the dog and put the dog in danger. Right. Right. So talk about that because that's something I think is completely misunderstood. They think, oh, the guy's shooting. I'm going to send a oh, dog. Oh, no, no, And you, see, no. you saw the YouTube video. Which yes, is, you know, absolutely. But it's not real. Right. No, we're not going to send a dog into danger because the dog is a, a, a living, breathing being. Right. And he's one of our partners, for lack of better terms. Yeah, he's you an know? officer. Yeah. But also, we don't want to use him for something that is going to precipitate us now going further. We weren't ready. What do you mean? I'm so what I mean by that is if I use a dog and I put him in danger mm -hmm. and he starts, danger starts happening to him. Mm -hmm. Well, what do I need to do now? Go save the dog. Well, mm -hmm. if I wasn't ready to go inside this location to go inside that car or whatever, then I'm not going to send a dog in there unless I'm ready to deal with it. Yeah. yeah. You know, another yeah. side of the coin is I don't need a dog getting hurt or killed. Yeah. Th does it happen? Yes. They do get stabbed and shot sometimes, you yeah. know, they, but my point to that is I will send a dog in place of humans. Mm -hmm. You know, of like course. I'm going to send a dog to search a dark alley, dark bushes yeah. instead of sending humans in there because sure. I don't have to go home and tell puppies mom or dad's not coming home. Yeah. But children, yeah. little kids, human kids, I do. Yeah. So, in that sense, I will send a dog first. Yeah. But if I know a suspect is inside of a closet and he's armed with a gun, there's no need for me to send a dog there. Uh -huh. I know he's there. He's armed with a gun. We'll see, I'm going to use a dog. I'm going to wait him out. we we'll use gas, gas with, with other other tools to get that guy into custody. Yeah. Yeah. So the criteria of sending a dog is, 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 is there like three criteria? Like so, yeah, uh, outstanding felony suspect okay. uh, or a misdemeanor suspect, or any suspect reasonably believed to be armed. Okay. Those are our two criteria. Okay, and those, that's it. That's it. Okay. We'll use a dog for those. And are they stationed all over the city? Like Because no, you've got so different the, divisions. Yeah, so the way it works for us is, uh, like I said, if we're not on a canine search, we're training. Mm -hmm. we're, we're somewhere in the city training. Okay. And then the helicopter gets a hold of us, and we keep our radios on. If we hear a, a division going to a foot pursuit or setting a perimeter up, we start listening to it. Or the incident commander call down a metro and say, hey, we need K-9 out here. Okay. And then we'll rally up, and we'll go out in mass to go down there and search. And how quick can you get there? Because it's a huge city. We'll probably get anywhere in the city. We drive code three, so we can probably get anywhere in the okay. city within 20 minutes. Anywhere in the city? Anywhere in the city. Wow. Yeah. Well, and we work crazy. the hours. Our hours usually are at night, so... Really? Yeah. yeah. So more canines get deployed at night than yeah, during the we're, day. Yeah, we're gonna work during the busier hours. Why is that? Oh, it's just more it's, crime. It's, it's more crime. It's busier. Yeah, you have more. You have more canine requests coming out. So there's more canine requests in the evening than. Oh, absolutely. Time. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So what we okay. do is, and that's and that's. I'm glad that's a good question because, so we look at our we look at our stats all the time because we want to provide the best service as mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. So we look at our stats and our stats will tell us which days are busier, which hours are busier. So we want to make sure that the bulk of our unit is working during those times. Right. And the officers do get to take their dogs home. They go right? home, yes. So they go home, but it's a little bit different now. Like your dogs are here laying around the house, hanging out, yeah. having a good time. Yeah. Our dogs can't do that. Oh, you don't let them do Not that. Not let them do that for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, our dogs are training every night and they're working. They're either training or working every night. So mm -hmm. they're doing some form of work every night. Okay. So when they get home, I want that dog to have a place to just go rest and just like veg. This, is my, this is my kennel, this is my space. 
I can chill out. Yeah. They don't need to go from working all night long to home and now, you know, Samantha and Shane decide <laughs> they want to play the dogs. Right. And, and right. now right. the dogs playing. And you know it's going to happen. Exactly. <laughs> and so then, I, you know, and the dogs are trained to perfect the bite and, they're mm-hmm. little, and our dogs are higher drive. Mm-hmm. So I don't need any accidents. Yeah. You know, I mean, my kids know how to deal with the dog, but I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, sure. But another handler's kids may not be able to. And, yeah. and, and, you know, they have a ball in their hand, the dog is going for the ball. And he accidentally bites a kid. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 liability. Yeah, I don't need the that. headache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other side of the coin is I want the job to be the dog's outlet. Right. Okay, if the dog's at home, and my daughter Samantha, because she's a dog lover, she wants to be a vet. If she has a dog at home, he's on his back, he's eating bonbons, he's getting <laughs> pet. So I go start right. the car to go to work. He's right. like, Why? Ah, she's right. pretty good yeah. here. This, I got it's it. Good. Yeah. I got this. You said vanilla bonbons next? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to stay here, Mike. Right, right. You know, so <laughs> right. Right. work becomes secondary. Yeah. So I need the dog to be on point for work. Yeah. And that's such an important piece because the work, and, and this is on my you know YouTube channel, I always hear these, these complaints. All these dogs are being forced to work. Bullshit. No, forced? Right, right? forced. No, yeah. please. No, <laughs> yeah. no. You know, I mean, they love this. They thrive on it. Right. This that, is that, what they're that's bred what they're for. Bred for. Yeah. And, and that's what people don't understand, too, which is why a lot of dogs that we use for police work, unless you know dogs, you can't have that dog's a pet in your home Mm-mm. because you wouldn't be able to provide the proper outlet for that dog. Right. And when I say the proper outlet, it'd be either the the, the satisfaction stimulation outlet mm-hmm. or just a control outlet to control mm-hmm. that dog in your household. Yeah. And so a lot of those dogs end up in pounds or rescues, so on and so forth, because people see it. Oh, it looks yeah. cool. Yeah. You know, you go watch the movie. What was it uh, John and Wick with the Malinois on it? Oh, next thing you know, everybody wants one. I went off on that. Yeah. I, went off on I, I want a Malinois and STI gun. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. And they say, you know. I know. You know. know. That's it, so true. Right. So you have to be able to provide that outlet. These the dogs want to work. Perception is so bad. And that's why I think now I'm seeing so many Malinois in rescues. and When I started yes. in the shelters, there was no, there was a Malinois site. It, yeah. You would you never, no one ever had one. No. It's no. Like, they looked like a German Shepherd and exactly. Coyote mix or something. Exactly. Right? But I remember when I first, before I got goofy, I was um, doing all these programs with the LA City shelters. And I wanted to get a rescue. And I said, I'm going to, I was determined to get a rescue. And I finally, I got, I think, four or five of them. I think I found them. And then I took them and I had a sharp paint. And they just did not get along. They were trying to right. kill it. And that's why I found a breeder. It got goofy. But a couple of them got placed. One got placed as a cell phone detection dog in one of the prisons oh, great. and stuff like that, which is so good for them. Absolutely. But now I'm seeing so many dogs, you know, because everybody says, oh, I want to get, I got a Malama. They all want one. They all want one. And they don't have the wherewithal to raise one. Yeah. You know, it's funny because uh, our department was all German Shepherds at one point. Mm-hmm. We had a couple of Rottweilers here there. We have uh, Liberty and uh, Brutus. But we're pretty much German Shepherds. And I, when I came into the units, when we just started making that transition to start getting Malinois in. And so uh, we go, I, I, get, I get selected to the unit, and one of the trainers then comes to my house. I used to live two doors down from my parents. And he had this German Shepherd out there. My dad was real big in the Shepherds. And he had this German Shepherd out there, uh, 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 Hasco. He, Hasso, real big, beautiful dog running around my front yard. My dad's like, oh, that's a beautiful dog. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm getting one tomorrow. I'm going to get one, too. <laughs> and so we put my kennel up and everything. I'm like, oh, I'm getting one of those, too. And my, my dad's friend, oh, yeah, right, bring him by. Yeah, yeah. So I go to this guy's house to pick my dog the next day. And it's a Malinois. I had never seen a Malinois. And I go, what the hell is that? Right. I see this skinny thing, these long ears. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that's not a German Shepherd. Yeah, yeah. So I bring that dog home. And I mean, he is just this wiry little untrained fool. Yeah. Open a car door up. He runs into the backyard. My dad's like, man, they got you. He said, what is that thing? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's not a German Shepherd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it turned out to be one of the best dogs I've ever had. Yeah. Turned out to be a phenomenal police dog. Different animal. Yeah, different, totally different animal. Yeah, people do not understand. They think, oh, it's kind of like a German shot. No, no, it's not. Uh-huh. Different animal. You no. know, and that dog was not about staying home. No. 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 He won. Yeah, I mean, he stay home yeah. and, and be in his kennel and stuff like that after working. But no, he's a working dog. Yeah. I mean, these guys do. And they need I mean, a job. Yeah. yeah they, they need can't. a job. They're, a they're itching to do something. They are. Yeah, There's so. nothing happening. I mean, it's funny. I put an e-collar on Goofy or whatever. But the, the key thing is if he sees a sleeve... Yeah, oh, it's like crack. Oh, yeah. And he's like, oh. I got to do this. Yeah, light switch just came on. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Or a tennis ball. Yes. Right? Right? Oh, it's yeah. Like, it's just insane. Pray. Anything pray. Anything pray. Yeah, anything yeah. pray. Crazy. Let's, let's talk about that because um, the prey drive is, is, is such an important component, right, for yes. the dogs. And, you know, so let's talk because you're a trainer. And I, I didn't actually know when Cindy referred you. I thought you were just a canine cop. Right. But actually, well, I'm not too. No, I know, but I'm <laughs> yeah. saying, but to, to have somebody who really understands right. what it takes to, to, to do this right. is such a it is such a gift. I'm so really grateful that you, you have that knowledge. 
when you're talking about the dogs, the, those primary drives, the defensive drive, right, right? and that fight drive, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that because that's you're talking about it from. I've talked to people about the sports side, but I really want to talk about this real side, right, right. So I, from let's just start the defense side. Mm -hmm. You know, people say fight drive, and I don't truly believe there's a fight drive in dogs. I don't right. think there's a fight drive in humans. Mm -hmm. What I believe is there's a certain level of defense in us. And our defense has different thresholds, mm -hmm. meaning that if I'm an ATM machine getting money out and I put my card in and get money and someone sticks a gun on my back, my body is going to go and my mind's going to go to defense. Mm -hmm. Now, what level of defense I'm going to go to is going to be based on my training, my experience, how much of a drop I think this person has on me. Yep. And my defense goes into two different directions. One is fear. Mm -hmm. I got to get the hell out of here. Yep. You know, and the other one is fight. Fight. Okay, you know what? It's going down right now. Yep. You know, so that's yeah. so same thing with dogs. Mm -hmm. I think dogs have a level of defense. They have a defense, but their defense goes in the threshold. Mm -hmm. So when I'm testing a dog, a brand new police dog, I do what called stake line test. I, I've chained the dog up, I stalk them, and it's just me, it's no no body equipment, just mm -hmm. a stick. And you can see the dogs going to defense, you know, some going rather early and mm -hmm. some kind of just stale or reserved. But their thresholds change. Some try to just I gotta get off this line, I gotta mm -hmm. get away from this guy. And then some are like, right? you know what? Bring it on. Let's go. Yeah. We're going to fight. So where do you look for, for a police dog? Where, where is that line? Because if they're too much, let, let's do it. Exactly. If it's it too much. Not good. It's not to, exactly. So right. I want a dog that's going to be kind of like very confident. Meaning like like that, an officer, right? Like an officer, right. Okay. So you have some dogs that I'll start off, I'll start off about 50 feet away from them, at least. Okay. 150 feet away. And as I start coming out, some dogs start barking right away. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm here. Get away from me. Mm -hmm. They turn sideways, try to make themselves look bigger. But as I get closer to them, you see the bark starts getting more of a whine. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, they're trying to get off that line. They're trying yeah. to hop, they're trying to get away. Yeah. And then you have some dogs who just immediately just go crazy. Bark, 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 going crazy. But they're not scared. They're just crazy. Yeah. They're a little over top. <laughs> right. But then you have those ones that are just kind of like, they look at you. Eh, whatever. Yeah. They go sniff the ground. Yeah. They go do something else. That you get a little closer, they look at you. They just stop and watch you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to push the issue. Okay, I want to watch you a little mm -hmm. bit. And they don't turn on until you get about 10 feet away from them. And that's kind of what you're looking that's for. That's what I'm looking right? for. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But then that same dog, once he turns it on, I drop the stick. I take a knee. I put my hands out. Yeah. And you'll see that dog just calm down to the point where I can pet him. Mm -hmm. That's confidence. That's brilliant. That's what I want. Yeah. I want a dog like that. He, yeah. he turns on he needs to. Yeah. But when it's done... It's done. We're cool. We're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that, yeah. So now back to the drives of police dogs. So they all have that level of defense. Mm -hmm. I want to see that. But then they have to have a level of prey because a prey is going to go into their hunt, mm -hmm. their hunt drive, meaning that there has to be something that's an object of their desire. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of dogs, it could be the tennis ball. Mm -hmm. You know, like when people are working detection dogs, you know, the dog's not hunting for the. <laughs> But right. the, the dope. <laughs> they don't care He's about that. He's hunting for that tennis ball. Right, right. Exactly. So that's his <laughs> yeah. prey item, though. Yep. He knows that finding that smell leads me to this tennis ball. Yep. Yep. It doesn't matter if I throw the tennis ball off the wall or if, it, if he turns around and gets for me. No matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You just get the ball. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so they have that level of prey, which goes into their hunt that drives them forward. Right. You know. And so, but you need the level of prey to to the extent that it does bleed off in the hunt because for us, when we go search for bad guys. The one thing that's not there is the bad guy. Mm -hmm. So when you first start off, you get the guy that bites to get the dog's attention. Right. Well, that's prey drive only. For He's sure. all in the prey and he sees it. And so that's very easy. Mm -hmm. But now take that out of the picture and just give the dog the command to go hunt. You know, you need something there yeah. that, that prey has to drive over to hunt now mm -hmm. or his desire. So I do a hunt test with dogs too when I test them. I bring a decoy out. Uh, I bring the, I have the decoy hiding behind a tree or something. I bring the dog out. I have the decoy fire the dog up. Then I'll take the dog and hide him again. And then I have the decoy leave the spot where the dog saw him and go hide somewhere. Okay. And I bring the dog out and just release him. Yep. And the dog that I want is a dog that's going to constantly, consistently keep hunting for that decoy. Not going He's, back to the old spot. Exactly. You see some, and they all run to the old spot first. For sure. I mean, that's where they last saw him. Mm -hmm. Recency of experience, they run over there. But the dogs that I'm looking for, once they get there, oh, it's not here. They start looking, they start searching for him now. Mm -hmm. You know. And I, I'm not so, I, if they find them, that's 110% great. Yeah. But if they just don't give up and keep trying to find them is what I want. Right. I, can teach you how to, I can teach you to use your nose from point A to point B, but I can't teach you the desire to do it. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a really thing. important point. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So I need to see them have the desire to hunt. Mm -hmm. I can teach them how to perfect their hunt. Right. But if they don't want to hunt, yeah. I can't do it. So when I test dogs, 
I don't test any dog for anything I can train the dog to do myself. That's I like that. I only yeah. test them to see what Mother Nature gave them mm -hmm. that will make, enable me to do the things I want to do with the dog. How much of that do you think is what you're saying Mother Nature gave as opposed to, like, I think Mother Nature gives them all the ability to yes. do it, but not the desire the to desire to, Exactly, right. right? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Every dog probably has a certain level of defense, mm -hmm. a certain level of prey, right. so on and so forth. But they just may not have it at high enough levels, mm -hmm. you know. So we look at it as uh, our first chief trainer back in the day was Don Yarnell. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used to break it down to, uh, he says, you have uh, your drive levels in dogs are pronounced, present, and insufficient to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I still use that. So I want certain drives to be pronounced in a dog, mm -hmm. hunt drive, uh, confident defense threshold, uh, prey drive. But then I want certain things. I don't want the prey drive to be over the top where the dog has to have visual stimulation all the time. Mm -hmm. So I want, the, I want the prey drive to be more present, but the hunt drive to be more pronounced in okay. the dog. And then some dogs, you know, like if they have a level of fear and it's insufficient to matter, that's good for me. Because mm -hmm. you know, they're gonna have, every dog's going to have a level of defense threshold of fear. For sure. They're going to have that. So yeah. to find a dog that's not afraid of anything... Yeah, that's not going to happen. It doesn't that's, exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist. It's like, it's like a person, right? It's I mean, like a person. There's nobody There's nobody who's not afraid of everything. Exactly. So we had a dog last night during a training search and uh, had a decoy hiding in a, uh, the, one of the trainers had a decoy hiding in a big dumpster. And uh, absolutely the little Dutchie is talking about, worked a scent and got to the dumpster, started barking up. And the decoy flung the door open, the top of the dumpster. It came back and it kind of hit absolutely in the head, hit the side of the door. He jumped back. Yeah. But immediately... He went back into work. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. So, that fear threshold did yeah. come come to bear, yeah. but his fight threshold overtook it. Yeah. Lou know? and I used to call that the startle response. Yes. Exactly. Right? So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spook the dog. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clang something really loud. Exactly. And they're all going to go, oh, shit, what was that? Exactly. But then, how fast do they recover? How fast do they recover? And that's huge that's for, you, for you as a for police department, yes. right? And that's the same with humans, though. For sure. You know? Yeah. yeah. For sure. Loud noises might yeah start on me but yeah. i need to recover from it they say this uh, for i think it's mammals they say there's only two things two fears you're born with you know what those are i do not falling and loud noises okay well i believe falling right me too yeah I, i'm afraid of heights yeah, me too. <laughs> i'm not afraid of heights i'm afraid of landing yeah, but, yes i'm afraid of falling that's <laughs> right? good, yes but that's the only two fears and and dogs the same wow. way. that's why with a puppy the first thing you want to do you want to pick them up yes and if they're freaking out not a good nerve dog, no. but if they're confident enough to go up there. And then the other thing we used to always talk about is the difference between confidence and um, what was it? confidence and uh, I forget. I'll think about it in a second. Um, where where the dog would have to to be able to um, confidence and I've got a whole manual. I'll give you a copy of it. But we had all these different things we went through, and a lot of it came from Reavers. Right. We were, I mean, I think he's just had such. And Don Yarnell, is, I know, I know somebody who knew Don really well. Yeah. Is Don still alive? No, he's not. No, he uh, died a few years ago. Uh, and Don was not a people person, but a phenomenal no, dog trainer. But he was an amazing guy. Oh yeah, amazing. His dog work right. was just phenomenal. Phenomenal. So the other side of that, using the word confidence, the other side for us, a big thing for us is environmental. The mm -hmm. dog has to survive environmental. Yeah, you know it's real big for us because LA is just a hodgepodge. It's an urban jungle, so yeah. to speak. It's everything going out here. Yeah. So the dog has to be able to work within that. So I mean, we have an alley that we use in uh, for dog training, and I'll hide the decoy at the very end of the alley. But the dog has to go down this alley, which is basically a gauntlet. On each side of the alley, you got one one side has about four or five pit bulls and rottweilers barking at it. Mm. The other side has multiple dogs barking, and the dog has to maintain all Great. those nerves and make it through there and find the decoy. Yeah, because those are things that they worry about, you know, yeah. stairs. I mean, yeah. all kind of weird things. Textures, These dogs, ex exactly. Right. Slippy floors, basketball yeah. floors, little, yeah. you know, yeah. all weird stuff that dogs have to overcome. Yeah, but people don't think about that. They don't think about that. So yeah. we have to make sure the dogs environmentally sound as well. How much of that do you think is weeded out or is 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 developed in early, early, early puppy stages? I think a lot of it is. Yeah, you know, but the problem with it is that you can only do so much. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only do so much and then the world offers so much more. So how much of it do you think is genetic? Like how much of it do you think is that dog genetically has? Oh, I think it's probably more genetics than it too. is training. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah right? it's, uh, definitely. I mean, you see that with kids, everything. Same thing. It's definitely more genetics involved. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. And it can be harnessed early on in, but if, it, if they come from a slippery line of dogs that are nerve bags. Is there right. Well, you think about it when it comes to dogs, though. So you, you can't you can't train maturity. Mm hmm. You can't train heart or confidence, but mm -hmm. the genetics thing, you yeah. know, you can't train uh, genes. Yeah. They're, 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 they are who they are, you know, <laughs> you for know? Sure. and so those are certain things you can't train. You can't train hunt. You can perfect those things mm -hmm. and build on them. 
And, you know, you can't turn a second grader into an 11th grader. Right. You know, the, the, Very true. the dog is who he is at age he is. You know, yeah. you can't treat this dog that's 16 months yeah. the way you're going to treat a dog or train a dog that's four years old. Yeah. There's just certain things he's not developed in yet. Do you, do you notice that a lot of the dogs um, have more, or, or I should say, do you notice some of the dogs mature less quickly or, or slow to mature. I know certain breeds, like like Schnauzers, for example, are very slow to mature, and Rotties, too. I think they are, but I think when it comes to police dogs, yeah. I think they mature a lot faster because they're forced to. Okay. So what I mean by that is, again, you know, once you start having all these different entities buying police dogs, you know, the back in the day in Europe, a lot of the dog people, a lot of them still are, were sport people, though. Mm-hmm. They have these sport dogs, and they take them to a certain level, and if they had a champion, well, I'm probably going to keep that dog in house and breed from it. Yeah. And, you know, but every dog's not going to be a champion. Right. So those ones that weren't, I'm going to take them and sell them off to the United States. They'll be yeah. police dogs, military dogs, whatever the case may be. Well, once you start buying all these dogs, the, the, the demand started going way up. The supply is going to have to water down at some point. For sure. You can't. You can't. So when I first came in, uh, police dogs, when I first started canine, it was average to police dog three or four years old. Mm. Now, if you see a dog three or four years old, people are like, whoa. What's wrong with them? Why are they so old? <laughs> right, right. Why do you still have this dog so long? Well, they don't understand. That's just the yeah. norm, you know? Yeah. They used to these young pups. Yeah. But the problem with these young pups, though, is that in order to get them to test mm-hmm. and perform to a certain level, like a three-year-old dog or a four-year-old dog, mm-hmm. there's a lot of pressure being put on these dogs. A lot of pressure. I mean, mm-hmm. I call it gladiator school. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of these dogs that are over in Europe go to gladiator school, mm-hmm. then they come here. Well, the problem with that, though, is that you can't hurt that dog enough. Yeah. Because he's like, all right, this all you got? Yeah. You, did you bring a lunch? We're going to be here for a while. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, right, right, I right. mean seriously, because <laughs> to yeah. get a dog that that's, that's that young yeah. to try and test to this level, is you've, that dog's been de- 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 getting the, the screws put to him a yeah. lot. Yeah. You know? So what I mean by that, I don't mean they've been hurting the no, dog. No, no, or, no. But it, maybe they fast forward a lot of stuff with this dog. Yeah. A lot of stimulation. A lot of a high level stuff going to the dog. Yeah. So now you get the dog. He's here. Yep. And if you're trying to correct that, you know, you, so before if I had a dog that was older and I'm doing obedience, I tell the dog to sit and he sat at my side. I'm good. If he sat a little bit in front of me or behind, I have what I call the box. Mm-hmm. I'm trained to have a box and the dogs that stay within my box. So if he sat in front of my box or outside of my box or behind my box, I would correct it right away. But some of these younger dogs. If you just gave me a sit, yeah, I don't care if it's outside the box. You just gave me a sit. Good. When? Right. <laughs> exactly. Right, right, right. We're going to do some success, successive approximations here. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. We're going to yeah. win here yeah. because it's a younger dog. Mm. You know, so I'm going to be a little bit more kid gloves with this dog. Got it. You got know, it, got it. And I mean, I think the reason they were older back then, too, is because when you're, if you had a dog that's an IPO3 or Ring Sport 3, it takes time. It's going to be three year old Yeah, dogs, exactly. Right? Yeah, you're it takes time. That. No. But these dogs now you're getting, they have a nice foundation to a bite. They're ready to do something. They call them pre titled. Yeah. <laughs> <They're pre-titled. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Those are expensive yeah. dogs. <laughs> but my point to back to your original question about the genes and uh-huh. genetics is that, so these dogs have the genes and the, gen- the genetics in them, you mm-hmm. know. But now, but they're young. They don't understand how to put it out there. Okay. And so we have to do that for them. Okay. So give me an example of how would you. So for example, like uh, just different sights and sounds. So it's almost like if I'm walking to school and uh, I'm a young kid, I've been at home all the time. I have any older brothers and sisters, but I'm a tough kid. I'm bigger than, I'm bigger than most and I'm tough uh, and I'm solid than bigger than most kids my age mm-hmm. and I'm walking and I see a group of kids coming that I know are bullies at school mm-hmm. I'm genetically stronger mm-hmm. and could probably beat all of them up at one time but I'm going to have a certain level of fear because I don't know that yet hmm. I'm going to have a certain level of fear be kind of apprehensive or whatever case may be but then all of a sudden if it gets pushed to a fight and I mop the floor up with three of them right. all of a sudden now the next day I come by I'm like oh you guys right. again huh? <laughs> who's, who's first well same right. to the dog though mm-hmm. the dog has the genetics in him to overcome that environmental problem mm-hmm. But you just can't thrust him into it and expect that he's just going to be okay with it. Yeah, yeah. You have to gradually put him in there and, yeah. and bring it out of him a little bit. And then once the dog's just a little comfortable, oh, I can handle this. And that's where good training comes in. That's, that's absolutely. very fair to the absolutely. dog. Absolutely be fair to the dog. Right. And I, I mean, do you think, because now we're talking about that we're not using dogs as much that were pre-titled, do you think sometimes that's actually even better? Because sometimes those habits, obviously, like biting on a sleeve. I, I am. Gotta, I am uh, if, I had, if you gave me two dogs to choose from, and both these dogs had the capability of passing my test. And one was titled and one was not. I take the one that wasn't. Yeah. And the reason why is because 
only thing, the only stuff that dog's going to know is what I taught it. Yeah. So this, this dog is going to be a true LAPD Metro Canine dog. Mm-hmm. This other dog is going to be one as well, but he's also that Campy V guy's dog, the IPO dog, yeah. the ring sport dog. Yeah. And he has things that he's been trained to do that I can't use. Yeah. You know, so for example, we do a verbal out with all of our dogs. Okay. I mean, if a dog's on a bite, we get behind a position of cover, we call a dog off the bite back to us. Right. Because we, we, for us, a suspect by itself is chaos. Mm-hmm. A dog is chaos. They're together, it's even more chaos. Yeah. Well, chaos is a soft chaos, so we gotta stop the chaos. So yeah. for us, and it's tactically safer for us too. We call it, we roll out the dog back from the bite and he comes back to our side and then we deal with the suspect. So in doing so, I lost my train of thought there. Um, I apologize. Sp- uh, sport dogs. The sport dogs, okay, I'm sorry, yeah. So they verbal out back. Mm-hmm. Well, in Camp UV, the dogs come off the bite. They're taught to do an escort. Mm-hmm. So they come off the bite. They go behind the decoy. They start barking, 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 and walking the decoy back. Exactly. Well, so now that's something you have to train out of the dog to extinguish right. in order for the dog to perform the way I want them to perform. Right. You know? And so that's, that's, that's one reason why I prefer a green dog. Yeah. Because my training time is going to be more geared to what I want to do. Yeah. As opposed to being split between what I want to do and train the dog to do and then retraining the dog yeah. to stop doing certain things. And it's hard to unlearn it's, it's hard to unring a bell. I mean, Absolutely. For three years that's Absolutely. exactly what they've yeah, done. Yeah, so I have to I have to I have to put a, a long line on the dog. Yeah. When he comes up the bike, guide him back and show him what I want. Yeah. As opposed to him standing because he'll stand there and bark all day long. Yeah for sure. To bring the guy back. But I think the escort's in almost everything. I mean it's it is, yes. But we get a lot of dogs from Holland so I see the KBB oh, more. Yeah. yeah. But, but no, it's an escort yes and everything. Yeah. Sports, exactly everything that, so, too. so that's a big deal. You know, yeah. so and the dog and that's they get points off of that. So that's been ingrained that dog over and over again yeah you know. i think it's good though. i mean I, I i never thought i always thought well god these these dogs have so much more foundation but it's that foundation that can bite them in the ass right, right? because now yeah. they're doing something that's going to put them at a greater exactly. risk right with and they do have foundation in other areas don't get me mm-hmm. wrong there are some pros to it some kind you know mm-hmm. but i look at it i call the uh the title dogs that come to phd dogs the green dogs that call them the dunce that's that's the dog that mm-hmm. sits in the dean's office all day long <laughs> right. with the dunce cap on right that's right. the dog i want yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a little but, scrapper. Yeah. He just needs direction. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Which is fun to right. do, right? But if you think about it, I mean, I always use the analogies of dogs and kids all the time. Mm-hmm. But if you think about some of the kids who are little kids in school, right? they're very smart. They're just, their brains aren't being stimulated. Yeah. And they don't have it, that, that energy isn't being directed the right way. So if you get a, a dog like that, where his yeah. brain's stimulated a certain way, yeah. you're able to channel that energy, oh, he's going to be a Beautiful hound for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be phenomenal for you. You're looking for that bitability, right? Yes. That, that, that workability. Exactly. That desire to the please. The desire, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, and I and I liken it to, control. I call it controlled aggression. Mm-hmm. Because I'd rather have to rein you in than kick you in the butt and make you go. Yeah, because that don't work. It doesn't work. Right, yeah. No, it doesn't that's, work. That's the problem. Exactly. So if you get a dog that's like that, and you're able to just kind of chain him and shape it to what you want, oh, yeah. it's going to be phenomenal for you. I talked to an interview with a guy, funny point. Um, his, he, he is the number one IPO, uh, sorry, the number one uh, IGL. He's won the, IGL, the National Gun okay, Dog right, yeah. in England. Um, amazing trainer. And he said what he hates is when he sees a dog that's totally in control, like a, a young pup that's totally yes. in control. He said it's uh, the dog should be jumping and going. Having and going, fun. Having fun. Right. Right. And we're all about, especially for pet dogs, sit down, stand, no, no, and all this stuff where that's we're taking everything out of the dog that the dog is really bred to do. Exactly. And here you're talking about using this and having and then if, if once it's squashed out of them, now what, right? Right. Because once that genie's out of the bottle, you can't put it back in. You can't put it back in. You know, yeah. and, and it's almost like, uh, what was that football player, the kid? Uh, his, he played for the Raiders. I think he might play at USC first, but he was, his dad wouldn't let him eat cake. And he had to have, so he couldn't oh, really? have sugar and all that stuff. I mean, it's very rigid childhood. Yeah. Well, by the time he got to college, he went through college. By the time he got to the pros, though, he finally had a taste of cake and, oh my yeah. God, <laughs> went crazy. Right. Next thing you know, he's doing crack and this, that, and the other. Yeah, I was yeah. saying, there was, you, you, you got to let them live a little bit. A thousand percent. You got to let them live a little bit. You got to let them be dogs. Yeah. You know, yeah. they have to be dogs. Yeah. And I'd rather have a dog that uh, learns from self-discovery more than me showing him. Yeah. If he learns from self-discovery, he's going to stick with him a whole lot, lot, uh, a lot more. He's going to be sure. a lot more ingrained and yeah. more conditioned than him. Yeah. The thing I was thinking about before is confidence and courage. Yes. Right? Such a huge difference. Huge they difference. seem like the same. Yes. But, you know, one thing is confidence. I know I can make it across the street. Courage right. is... I might get whacked in the head, but I'm still going to do I'm it. I'm still going to do it. Exactly. Yeah. And that, that's I'm being hit by a car, yeah. but I'm still running <laughs> still fast as hell. Yeah. And I always talk about that in the shelter. Yes. Like when you evaluate a dog, when you look at these pieces, 
so important to yes. look at these deep things and i'm super impressed with i mean i was always impressed with lapd and but 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 just talking to you about this it's just amazing i got a favor to ask you and i don't want to put you on the spot would you come back again absolutely we will seriously yeah okay because your wife makes good. phenomenal coffee by the way <laughs> oh, she's, she's amazing <laughs> Everybody always wants her on the podcast. That, that, that would be the podcast. Everybody no, I'd, I'd, I'd be more than happy to come back. I would love, love, love to I can talk dog back. stuff all day long. I can too. And uh, <laughs> and I'll take you up on your invitation to go. go, go oh, right along. Yeah, you got to come out. love to do that. Yeah. So, um, guys, I'm going to turn to this camera here because, sadly, all my batteries went down on my other cameras. Thank you so much for, for Michael for coming in. And um, this was an amazing podcast. If you don't love this podcast, unsubscribe from the channel. Uh, cancel your <laughs> membership because... This, this is more of this is coming. This is where we're really talking about dogs, really getting to the bottom of it. Michael, thank you so much for Thanks being for here. Me. And uh, coffee is, is always available for you. Yeah, yes. I promise you that one. Good times. Good. All right. <laughs>